Hello and welcome back to an RPG Architect tutorial. Today we are going to make a title screen. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in a new project. And the first thing you notice when you go into the UI section of a new project is that you have no title screen. You have no main title screen. Matter of fact, in order to play test anything, you usually have to skip the title screen or else nothing will happen. So I don't know if this is going to always be the case. I think there might be a default template that will be added to new projects in the future. But for right now, we have to create our own title screens. And they're actually pretty simple. But the first thing that you want to do is you want to open up your directory here and you want to start to import any of the assets that you're going to need. So for instance, I know I'm going to need a background image. So I'm going to go and grab my background image that I got right here. And I'll just copy it for this sake. And we're going to go back into images and paste. Now, once again, this doesn't have to go into the images section. It could go to anywhere, but you'll see as we're going into the database and setting up our title screen that when you open up files, it defaults to certain directories. And so it is kind of nice to not have to go to a new directory every time. So I know that images are going to default to the images directory. So I might as well just put it in there. Now we have a selector and a window. Now this window is just a small little window and RPGA will nine slice this up pretty nicely. So this is all that we needed. And then this selector is just a cursor and this can be animated as well, but I just wanted to get a static one, just get it out there going. So I'm going to copy both of these and I'm going to put them in the UI directory or actually they are already here. Okay. So that's great. So the last thing that we want is our font. If you want a, a, custom font. So I have a font here. I like this Zpix font because it does simplify Chinese and Japanese if you ever need those uh, specific languages. So I'm going to copy this and go into fonts. And there it is already in there as well. So now I just want to make sure that this was uh, let's see here UI. Yep, those are all in there. Okay, so now that everything is imported in there, folder wise, now we can start to implement them in the database. So first we're going to go to the database. We're going to go down to font families. We're going to import our font. So I'll just call this main font and then we'll just add it into that area. Hit okay. Now we can go to user interface. We can select one of the blank ones and this is going to be our title and we want to change this. It's not an overlay. It's going to be a menu, but we don't want it to be cancelable. So we want to uncheck this. If this is left checked and you are in the title screen, you can press escape and it will actually get rid of the title and then you'll be stuck in the title screen. So you won't be able to start a new game or do anything and you won't be able to bring up the menu again. So yeah, definitely uncheck is cancelable. We don't want it to be cancelable. So from here, we can actually just start to add our elements. And you can think of elements as just each part of the title screen. So for instance, we have a background, right? So for that, we want a picture. And when we select this, we can name it. So I'll just say this is going to be the background and we're going to choose the image. Now, if you choose a sprite, this can be animated. So you can see that there's a frame count, frame duration and stuff like this. So you can have animated images. Mine, however, is just an image, a static image. So I'm going to select this and we'll hit this, hit OK on that. And you can see that it just pops right up. It fills the screen because it stretches to the boundaries. If I unselect this, you can see that it just goes the uh, normal width and height of it, but I'm going to stretch it just like that. And really that's all that we need to do for this. We don't need to change anything like this. We can actually start to even test this out, but first we have to go down to title screen right here and we have to make sure that we select our title. So I'm going to make sure that I select title as our title and I'm going to uncheck skip title because now we have something to check. So now when we hit F5, it should bring up that background image for our title screen. So now, now we're starting with something. All right, so I'll hit F8. We'll go back into user interface now. And now we'll start to add just us some other stuff. So for instance, I want to have a title right here that says my game's name. And then I want to have the options right here. So for that, I'm going to add a text and we'll just call this the game title. And we're going to, I'll just change this, make this bigger. Let's start with 48, just see what's going on. It's going to use that main font that I did. And this is the text. The text is going to be game title. 
And there we go. So that is too small. So I want to, let's just try 96 and maybe 108. And we'll just go something like that. That's fine. You can do word wrapping. Well, we don't really need that, but uh, let's go down and start to position this at least. So what I find really easy is the relative X right here. I just select it like this and use my arrow up to start moving it to the right. And then I'll go down to relative Y and move my arrow up to start moving it down. You can just kind of see where it looks good. Might go over just a couple more here like that. And then I'm going to change the color. So let's change the color and I'll make it a kind of a gray. I don't know if it'll work or not. I will just make it black. That way we can kind of see it. And yeah, so that is our game title. So now we want our options. So what I'm going to do is add another element. And this one, I'm going to add a pane. Now a pane is kind of something that you can scale and, and kind of, kind of like a background for words. A lot of times it's used for like a window kind of a thing. And I'm going to call this options uh, background. So we'll just do that. And now we get to select what kind we want. So I want this window right here. I'm going to hit okay on this and you can see that it just takes up the whole screen, but I'm going to say uh, stretch or no, no, no. We want it to be component component is the nine slice. And so that's what we want, but we want to start to make it less. So I'm going to select on the relative width down here and start pressing the down arrow and it's going to get less and less and less. And then I'm going to start selecting on the relative height, hold the down arrow, and it's going to get less there. Now I'm going to select the width and I'm going to bring it, or sorry, the uh, relative X, and I'm going to just bring it out a little bit and then select the relative Y and bring it down. And we're going to adjust this. So I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but for right now, I'm going to actually bring the title, I'm going to bring it up a bit. So on the relative Y, I'm just going to bring it up. There we go. Right, so now we got the options right here. So now the last thing that we need is we need a list of our options. And so the element we can choose is a list. So I'm going to select this, click on this, and we're going to name this the options. All right. So these options are really cool because this is how you can specify what different options you're going to have in your menu and how you specify them is over here on the right where it says items, just hit right, right here. And this is actually going to be an, an option for you. So for instance, you can come down here and write text and you can write new game and it, you can see that it's appeared right here. So this is going to be our first option, new game. And then what you can do is add another one. And this option will be called, let's just say options. This is where you could change like your background music and st stuff like this, volumes and stuff like this, but um, there is no volume changing right now. So we're not going to actually set this one up. I'm just going to show you that this is how you would do your options. And then when they do add that feature for changing your volumes and stuff, then we'll come back and I'll show you how to do those. So then we're going to add another one. And this is just to show you how to pull up another menu from the title screen. So this one is going to be credits. And then the last one, which is a typical one is a quit game or exit game or however you want to say that. All right. So one thing I did notice is that I didn't like how it spaced out and I couldn't really find a way to space them out more, but I did notice if I went over here and pressed enter, it kind of spaces them out a little bit more. So that's what I'm just going to do for now. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to move these from over here to over here. So what we're going to do is move these. So relative X and move it over. And then relative Y, move these over here. And now you can see that they're kind of small. So let's go up here and change the font size. Let's change it to, let's see, 48 looks, nope, too big. Let's do uh, 32. And let's do 34, 36. Yeah, that looks fine right there. So 36, and then I'm going to reposition it again something like that and I'll bring it up here and then I'll, I'm going to change the pane. So you do want some space right here. If you have a selector, like, well, for my design, I'm going to leave a space right here for the selector. So this is fine right here. 
as far as the width goes, but we need to change the, the height a little bit. So let's go back to here and change the relative height to something like that. Now we could even bring this down more and say, you know, the relative height is going to be three down. So then I'd go to options and also bring its relative height down three. There we go. And then you could adjust your game title. There's so many small little tweaks you could do, but for now we need to add a selector. So uh, if we select our list again, we can go down and select our uh, sprite for our selector. Now this can also be animated. And matter of fact, because this is not animated, I'm just gonna say one. And I'm actually going to, um, we have to know what this uh, sprite size is. So I'm gonna select the height here and just go, keep going down until it looks like it's, it's hard to see cause you can't really zoom in, but I'm just gonna go like this until I can get the, I think it was an 18 by 18. So yeah, that's it. So I'm going to hit okay on this. And we want to point it at the left. So we want to point it at the left of our options. So you could point it, there's all these different options. You can mask it, do it from the right, do it from the top or the bottom, however you want to do it, but this particular one on the left. Now, the next thing to do is to better position it according to the option. So I'm going to the cursor offset. I'm going to come here and do some negative values here. So go about negative 30 and then oops, a positive on the Y we want to go down until it looks about even. So yeah, about right there. That looks good. All right. So with this setup, let's just play test real quick and make sure that everything looks good when the tile screen pops up and yep, that is looking great. So now back in the database here, we want to further adjust this. Now, one thing that you can do is you can have sounds here for sound effects, or you can use the default sound effects. And those default sound effects are found in the, I believe it's, is it the general? Yeah, general. So you have the buzzer sound effects, cancel sound effects, and the confirm sound effects. And then there is one for the cursor sound effect. This is the uh, movement one. So it's kind of interesting because this one's called the cursor sound effect. But then if you go to this one and go to title, it's called the movement sound effect. So just make sure that you're double checking these sounds, but you can see the buzzer sound effect, confirm sound effect, they're all the same, but that movement one's name different. So, but yeah, if you set them up here, then you won't have to set them up in the, the UI. And that's pretty straightforward. So I'm not going to add one, especially since I really don't do audio on these videos anyway. But um, yeah, you can totally add an option like that. Now let's start adding the logic. So for a new game, if you are to select it, for instance, then we want it to start the new game. So down here, you have your scripts for when the button is executed, meaning that you've pressed confirmed on it. Or you can also do stuff for if the item's focused or unfocused. Now I'm not going to get into these. You can kind of imagine though, but if the cursor is on this item, you can basically do something. And then when the cursor is not on this item, you can also do something. So you could kind of really customize this a lot, but for executing, this is when you actually select the option. We're going to go to select, go to scene, and then we're going to say new game. All right. And then if we hit okay and we play test this, we can see that we can move up and down. So the selector is automatically going to know where to go because of the list element. So if we select a new game, it's going to start the new game. All right. So now we can kind of see this logic and how we're going to do the other ones. Whoops, uh, database F8. So now we're going to go to quick game, go down to execute. And this is obviously going to be exit or exit game. Now, the only different one is going to be credits. So what are we going to do with credits? For this one, we have to create a new interface. So we're going to call this credits. And it's also going to be a menu. And this one is going to be cancelable because we want to be able to exit out back to the title with using cancel. Now, I'm going to take some liberty just setting this up real quick. You might want to have its own background and stuff like this. 
But simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a pane. And we're going to call this the background. And I'm going to use the window that I had. And I'm just going to let it cover the whole thing. And that is going to be the background basically. And then I'm going to add two text elements. So I'll add a text element here and then another one. This one is going to be called, I'll just say my uh, credits title. And it's simply just going to say special thanks to my patrons. And we'll go something like that. And then we're going to move it. And move it down. And I'll adjust the font a little bit, the font size. Let's make it. Nope, that's too big. 48. Yeah, that's good. All right, so then I'll adjust that relative X again. All right, cool. There we go. And then on this next one, this is going to be the names and real quick i'm going to copy in and paste the names of my patrons here and i'm going to bring in the width down so that they start to and you can see that they're not uh, word wrapping so i want to select to word wrap and then boom it's it word wrapped them i also want them to middle i don't want them to be aligned from the left i want them to be aligned from the middle which start it means left, um, but then you have middle, and there we go. So then I'm just gonna keep adjusting that width till it's to my liking here. Let's go. Yeah, something like that. That's fine. And now let's just start adjusting the width, or sorry, the uh, relative x and y. Cool, cool. And then I'm going to add what I'm just, I'm just going to add a list. And this is again, so I can have input access. And this list is going to be called um, press escape or space to go back. And this is basically just going to be the direction on how to get out of the screen. So I'm going to adjust this X now, the uh, relative position here. And adjust it down here. There we go. Now escape is going to be by default because it is cancelable, but space, I want it to be uh, something sep or I want it to do the same thing. So now we're going to go to execute right here. And all we're going to do is we're going to add user interface. These are the options for user interface here. And I'm going to say close menu so that we're just going to, if we press space, we're going to close the menu. And since it's the only thing on the list, it's always going to be selected. And so that is how we're going to kind of play with that setting. And then the last, Oh, I bet I better name this here. Let's say, uh, we'll just call this the input list or input option input. That's fine. And then we're going to go back to title screen right here and we're going to go to credits. And when this is executed on, we're then going to call the user interface. We're going to open a menu and then we're going to open the credits menu and then we're going to hit okay. And this should all work. So if we go down to credits, it is going to take us to the credit screen. Now I can hit escape to go back or I can hit space to go back. And then also the last one that I haven't tested yet was to quit game. And so, yeah, hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Any questions, comments below, so any forms, discord, will get you figured out. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.